we went to Maine for my friend's wedding, Gina, um, from high school. This was like when this, like maybe the first two years of us dating. And it was his first time meeting my mother. And he got to meet my family, he met my grandmother. It was his first time meeting my best friend and meeting Gina. And I remember it, it was just a huge rite of passage for me because I had finally come back to Maine with someone that I loved and someone that accepted me. It was an overwhelming feeling of, I finally made it. And it's gonna sound weird, but I'm normal. So I used to live in Queens and um, my girlfriend, Isabella Del Rio, she hit me up one night and it was in December. And she was like, girl, let's get drunk and let's go to a club. And then in the cab, She's like, oh, we're going to a tranny party in Brooklyn. A party that um, is for trans women and their admirers. But the party that we were going to was, um, it's called Eat is Underground. It was um, a trans sex party. So it had cross-dressers, trans women, and kind of all of the above. So it was like set up where it was kind of just like a dark, like a big dark room. But each like little corridor had like different like themes kind of. And then they had rooms, like different like cubby holes where you could go in and fuck, pretty much, is what it was. So I ran into him, um, and he, I was crossing his, he was crossing my path, and I grabbed his hand and I was like, come here, we're talking. Like a Pokemon, I choose you. I remember we were on the couch, and we spoke, and I told him I liked his beard. He reminded me of Rick Ross, because at the time he was a little bigger than what he is now. He slimmed down a lot, he looks, he looks a lot better now, because he looked bad before, but yeah. You know. <laughs> but then we got to conversating and got to know each other a little good and stuff like that. And then she gave me another. I remember this. It was in December. And I think every day I would talk to her. Like, like during my lunch break and after work. Got to know each other a little bit better over the phone. And then one day she just said, um, are you, would you be open to like ever like going out with dating a trans girl? I was like, to be honest with you, I didn't really give it too much thought because I looked at her and she, I was like, this girl, she looks really cute and everything. I said, yeah, I'd be open to, you know, going to, you know, going on a date with you. Mm -hmm. Why not? We basically went to um, a bar near her her place, which was like maybe like a block or two. Yeah, because you're just as nervous as they are. Maybe you're, I'm probably, as a trans woman, I was probably more nervous than he was. I didn't know how what his ammo was. He could have said all this stuff, but at the end of the day, I didn't know what he truly wanted. If you can't take me out to eat, we're not having sex. I'm sorry. Like, why should you get in my pants if you can't even be a normal human being with me in public? Point blank, period. And this one done put me through the ringer. She done took me out to play a bunch of public places. I like, I'm like, okay. For me, I already knew it was a test. I'm not, I'm not stupid, so, but I said, you know what, okay, and what's next? And then we saw each other again for New Year's Eve. We had sushi and alcohol, and that was our first New Year's Eve together. For me, I um, am not interested in gender reassignment surgery at the moment. It is part of my body that I don't hate, but it's, it's there. It's part of me. It's part of Monique. There are a lot of people who have told me and who criticize me for not wanting to get a vagina. They have told me point blank that you're not a real woman until you get a vagina. And even then you're not a real woman because you weren't born with one. Reason number one being the factor that it's a crazy healing process. You're out of work for three months and then you have to dilate three times a day for up to six months. And that's an hour a day. And that's an hour each time you dilate. SRS is sexual reassignment surgery. It's where they take the male genitalia and form it into a um, female genitalia. And it's also called vaginoplasty as well. Or GRS, which is gender reassignment surgery, depending on how you look at it. And you may not get the results that you want once you get your SRS. Um, it may not properly function the way you want it to work. Another reason is that it's not fully functional. I wouldn't have ovaries. So pretty much I would just have a cavity. I would have a vagina, but it would just be a hole pretty much. A man-made hole, which is amazing, the technology that they've, uh, you know, overcome and that they can do this technology is amazing. But for me, it's like, why have a body part if it's not 
fully functional the way I wanted to. I would want to have kids with my vagina and I can't do that. And so that is one of the big reasons why I don't want it. I identify as a heterosexual female, but um, I date cis and trans men. But dating heterosexual men, it comes with a lot. I've we've got I've gotten into a lot of fights with friends, family members about his sexuality. It was a defining point where if they're calling him gay, they don't identify me as a female. And I've worked so hard to be this way and to identify and to look and to come across as a female as the way I am and I feel that they're just shooting me in the foot by calling him gay. Especially when it comes from society. Because society always tells someone that, oh, if a man is attracted to a trans woman, he has to be gay because of her genitalia. And that is not the case at all. Because like with David, he's a, he, was a, he met me as a woman and he was attracted to me as a female and he was attracted to my brain and my heart and the, my soul. Um, and it could, he could have cared less what I have between my legs. I just come to a point like, I didn't even, I didn't care what other people think to begin with. I don't, I really don't. It's just, I just, like I said, I live my life the way I see fit. And that's how I see it. And I got a lot of love for this woman right here. And we've been together four years, so that says something. And... I'll go through hell and back just for anybody who kind of threatens her and stuff like that. All bets are off. So, what does love feel like? It feels like a pink starburst. I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's all a different emotion. Waking up to him every morning is what I want to do. And it's like, for me, it we could have fought all day. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be called up next to him. And I'm gonna want that good night kiss and I'm gonna want that good morning hug before he goes to work Like I feel it's gonna sound crazy, but it's like clockwork. It's like part of my breathing routine We can't help who we love and Like I said something just kind of clicked for me. She's gone through so much adversity growing up trans trying to find her true identity Who she is in life and me just going through the adversities of being a black man in America. I feel like Anybody kind of throw some, throw something at me. I feel like I'm kind of bulletproof. If you love that individual so much, like, what are you willing to do to like truly keep them, make them happy, and just like maintain stability? You kind of go back into this, into a space where not just like when you just first fell in love with that individual, who makes you better as an overall human being in general. If that person really does love you. They'll set who you are. Flaws and all. You know, anybody can take you at your um at your strongest, highest peaking peaking moments. But are they gonna stay with you for when you down and out? When you got nearly nothing left? It's really what tests the relationship as well. Be a part of the Amon experience by subscribing to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Tumblr, and Facebook at Adoma Girl Man for more content.